it's Christmas in August. I have a collection of some new Sony gadgets here to show you guys. And I'm going to be looking at some of this stuff real soon. But uh, this piece here that I've got is a very unique piece. And I bet you not too many of you know what this is. It's called a bit of magic. And, um, well, I'll let you guys stew on this for a while and see if you can figure out what it is. That probably gives away a bit. It's got a color control and a hue control, and a brightness and a sharpness, and audio video in, and audio out, and an MPX out, and a mic volume. Have you figured out what it is yet? It also has a great big lens on the front. Check out the back end of this thing. It has a built-in Betamax. Now, in case you haven't figured out what this beast is yet, well, this is a video projector with a built-in Betamax. It's a CRT projector. When I first saw this thing, I thought, what the heck is that? Is that a TV camera? Is that a, is that a studio camera? At first, when I first, when it first rolled up in the car, I thought that was a camera, but actually, no, this is a projector. This is the reason the lens is so large. Well, it's got a, a CRT inside there. So basically it's a, it's a, a color television with a built-in projector and a built-in Betamax recorder player and it's got a tuner and everything built in. It's got a bit of a problem, so uh, let's uh, crack this thing open and see what's wrong with it. It even tells you how to put the cassette in it. There's the control panel. Now, when this unit was given to me, I was told that it worked, but when I plugged it in, it doesn't. In fact, all it generates is a completely white screen. So there's a problem in the, the actual video projector part of it. So I'm gonna try and get that part working and uh, see if we can get this thing going and I haven't got a clue even how to take this thing apart yet I've I've never seen one of these things uh, I heard about it years and years ago I heard that Sony had such a device but this is the first time I've actually ever seen one and apparently these units were more than a thousand dollars when they were sold and apparently it's got a good picture if you are in a totally completely dark room it's apparently got a pretty good picture it's not high definition obviously but uh, you know, if, it, uh, if I can get this thing working, it would kind of be kind of a cool little conversation piece to have. Anyway, I'm going to study this thing for a few minutes and see if I can figure out how to get it apart because obviously i got to get the covers off it before I can do any work on it. A couple of screws at the side and a couple of screws in the bottom. The whole back end pulls off the back of it to reveal the actual Betamax portion. I don't care about that part right now. I'm more interested in the uh, front end where the projection gear is. This is quite a big unit, so I'm going to set up my other work table and continue on it and see if I can get this thing apart and uh, get it working. I got a whole bunch of other equipment, though. This isn't the only thing that I received in this collection of equipment. I also got a couple of SLV R5, so they'll be coming up on future service videos. Those are Sony Super VHS machines. I got a VP2000 uh, three-quarter inch player and... Uh, a couple of other VCRs, got a 16 millimeter film projector with some films. That should be interesting just to see what's on these old 16 millimeter films. And uh, oh, all kinds of cool stuff that was given to me. This, this came to me from an old, an old uh, buddy that I used to work with back when I was in broadcast. And he's got a collection of uh, some video equipment. Like myself, he was in the, in the production industry and this is stuff that he had uh, from his production uh, business and now he's retiring and moving on and getting rid of his stuff. So he asked me if I wanted some of his old stuff that he was getting rid of and I said, bring it down. And this is the most unique piece I've seen yet. So I'm really anxious to get into this one and just see what makes this thing work. Okay, there's a couple of screws on the bottom underneath here that I've now removed from the bottom here. And I'm, I'm thinking probably what happens is the, the front must just, I'm thinking this whole top piece must separate and somehow and come off. I haven't got a clue. I gotta study this thing a bit. Usually Sony is pretty good with their arrow mark screws, but on this there are none. So there's gotta be some catches or something. To open this unit up. We're gonna try removing the bottom feet and see whether that holds the uh, the base on. Perhaps once the base comes off, the top will come off. So we'll remove the two bottom pieces here and see whether that release the bottom cabinet. Aha! Aha! That releases the bottom cabinet. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're 
we're getting somewhere. Okay, now we've got these two pieces off. Now, the front panel will probably come off as well. Okay, the top piece appears to be held on by a couple more screws here. So let's just release these two screws, one on each side, and then the top panel should come off. Aha! That is the unit opened up. What a cool piece of equipment this is. Turn it around. You guys can see it. Just goes back to 1985. Here's our, our projection lens assembly on here. And we've got side looks like this is the power supply side here of the board. We got a horizontal deflection. I mean this is a conventional TV is what this is. This is a conventional CRT television. I get into this unit and, and now I that was my other cap. And now I realize what this unit is. And th this is a very rare beast, this thing here. This is what's called an indexatron. It's a single gun, a true single gun color CRT. There are no shadow masks on these type of devices. Therefore, there's no color purity problems. There's no convergence problems. On a conventional CRT, you've got three guns, red, green, and blue. And the three guns, now Sony would call their Trinitron a single lens system, but it was still a three gun system. It was three guns side by side that all shot through the one lens. And they still required static and dynamic convergence to make sure that the three guns lined up on the proper colors. And what Sony attempted to do with the development of the Indexatron was to eliminate the need for a shadow mask, which would cut down on the size and the weight of the tube, and eliminate the need for um, the three guns. And they could do it with one gun. And basically how it works is the video signal is chopped up into red, green, and blue components, and it's switched. And this is the circuit board that does it. Get the red drive, get the blue drive, and background. This board here takes the incoming video signal and it divides it with time division multiple access. And uh, so that it basically chops the three video signals together into one. So as the red, green, and blue incoming signals are arriving at the board, it switches from one source to the next in sequence as the beam travels across the tube. And how that is referenced is what's called an index signal. And here's the clue to it right here, if I can get a shot of this thing. That little module that's glued to the back side of the picture tube, which is hard to see because my camera's not in focus, but that little module that's glued to the back side of the picture tube has a phototransistor in it. And on the back side of the tube, there's an index stripe between the blue and the red or whichever. If it goes red, green, blue, and then index, and then red, green, blue, and then index, and red, green, blue, and index. The red, green, and blue stripes, their color phosphorus shines out the front side of the tube and the index signal reflects to the back side so that the index signal flashes a strobe inside the bell of the tube. And that strobe is picked up by the photo sensor inside that little metal can that's glued to the back of the CRT. It actually looks in through the bell of the tube and it can see the index signal flashing. The index signal is also present on all four sides of the overscan area so that it gets a reference signal before the video is even turned on. That controls the timing so that the correct color is displayed at the correct time. So this is a very rare beast. I've only seen an Indexatron once and I have a service manual for an Indexatron, which is good. It's for the little three inch portable Indexatron, but I think that the, uh, the circuitry is probably very similar to this one. So I may have to call on that service manual and I know where it is because I just found it when I was cleaning up and I found this manual and I was gonna toss it and well, now I, I have a reason to keep it because this set, all it gives me when I turn it on is a white picture. So um, I'm going to uh, run some tests on this thing and see what we can figure out what's wrong with it. But it'd be really interesting if I can get this thing working because 
This thing here is a very rare piece of equipment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the power and you should see a glow coming from the back side. Turn on the power and when the picture tube warms up, there you go. That's the index signal that you are seeing. That's what shines on that set detector to provide the index signal to uh, synchronize the red, green, and blue switching. Right now, if I look at the surface of the tube, it's just got a white screen. So we have no video. I should have snow, but I don't. So we've got a bit of a problem here. We've got no video. So I have to uh, figure out why we've got no video. So I'm going to go and see if I can drag the manual out for this thing and see whether the manual is anywhere close to the uh, circuitry on this thing. There's a look at the CRT from the other side. As you can see, look at the size of the neck on this thing. It's huge. But there's only, if you look down here, it's, there's only one gun in here. Just like a monochrome black and white TV. I'm just going to uh, move some wires out of the way so you guys can see it. There's only one gun in the back of that tube. See that? There's only one gun and there's only one filament in the back of that tube. It's an indexitron tube. There's the index signal reader for the other side. There's one on each side of the tube. These are what pick up the pulses from inside the tube to synchronize the switching circuitry. Now the fact that this unit gives me a white screen as soon as I turn it on it goes to a full white screen. I'm thinking we may have a bias problem for the tube. One of our our drive signals off the power supply maybe our screen voltage is low or something. Something's wrong here so I'm going to just do some voltage measurements and see if I can find that our voltages to the tube as far as our our, our screen voltage and our, our video driver voltage and stuff is correct. I'm just trying to uh, figure this thing out because Again, this thing is, uh, there's nothing else like this, okay? This is not like a conventional color TV at all. There, a conventional CRT has three guns and three video circuits, three, out, three video outputs. This has got one. So this is kind of a hybrid between a black and white and a color set. And there's really nothing else that was ever made that was that resembled this other than this so it's going to take me a bit of time to uh, stare at this thing and try to figure out what's going on I'm going to do some voltage measurements I have a feeling that we're missing one of our voltages to the, uh, the CRT one of our screen voltages or something is wrong because I've just got a white screen a full white screen that's got drive lines in it which Almost looks like a short on the CRT, but I, I can't buy that there's a problem with the CRTs. The guy that gave it to me said it worked when he used it last, and they typically don't fail like in that way. They don't fail on a, 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 a relatively low-hour tube. I'm thinking we have a component, probably a capacitor or a connection that's gone open. So I'm going to be staring at the deflection board on this thing and running some tests, see if I can figure out why this thing is just giving me a, a bright white blank screen. Okay, the first thing we're going to check, we've got three voltages here. This goes down to the picture tube here. This, this connector connects up here. This is got three power supply voltages, 115 volts, 150, and 200 volts. So we're going to check to see that our voltages are there. So I'll turn on the set, and we'll see that uh, we have nothing. Is it on? Uh, yep, it's on. I don't have 115 volts. And I don't have a 200 volt supply. In fact, I got no voltage on any of these. What's going on? Is my meter not working? Check it to earth. Oh, 115. Okay, I guess I wasn't grounded. 151 and 200. So my three voltages are getting to the CRT. So we know that it's not a, a voltage problem here. Now we'll look and see if we've got any video signal getting to the CRT. Okay, looking at the schematic diagram for a different indexitron that I happen to have here. This one's actually for a KVX370, which is a little four inch indexitron CRT, but the principle indexitron is the same. So if I scope my red drive or blue drive, let's look at the R drive and B drive. Aha, I see video. It 
right? If I try a different channel here, let's try channel nine. Whoops, that's no. Try channel nine. That should be my. That should be my security cameras. I think I'm on channel nine. And if I switch it to external, nothing. So that should be video. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but I can see it there. That's video. And uh, that's on the R drive, and the B drive is here. It should be video as well. Yet I have no video on the screen, just a white screen. So from here it goes into the switching. It goes from here. It goes into the switching circuits. So that's red drive and blue drive. And from there it goes into the matrix switching. It comes out here and goes to the picture tube. Yet on here all I see is a sink and see solid white. It's not showing up the same on camera as it is here. The rolling shutter is giving me some grief. But uh, that's just a sink pulse. We're not seeing video. We're not seeing video there but I am seeing video here back on there. Okay, I am seeing video there. That's video, but I'm not seeing video up here. So somewhere on this indexitron board is uh, we're not our switching is not occurring properly. For the record, when I was scoping, I was seeing video on the drive. Video drive for red and blue. But when it comes on the output, which is up here, I was seeing nothing on the output there. Just seeing a white screen. So uh, hopefully this board, I'm going to look at the schematic diagram and hopefully the ICs in here are similar for the switching because we have a switching problem. It's not switching the signal. First I have to check to see that I'm actually getting the index signal from the, re from the uh, photo detectors on the tube because they have to be providing a signal for the phase lock loop for the switching circuits to actually operate. So my two index signals come up here on these two connectors. These both go to the little amps that are mounted on the CRT itself. They provide me my index signal, which I am getting an index signal. Again, the rolling shutter doesn't give me, uh, doesn't do me any justice here, but uh, trust me, the index signal is there. Okay, there's the two index signals. Yeah, I'm staring at the same thing. Jesus, this looks almost like a screen is set too high. And I just adjust the screen control here, ever so slightly, and the buddy picture just popped on. The buddy screen control is out of adjustment. And I'm staring at this thing wondering why the hell it's not working. And it, what it was was it was over biasing the CRT. And this buddy thing's got a picture on it now. Let's turn out the lights and see what it looks like on the wall. Incredible. Okay, when you say, when I say you have to be in a totally dark room for this thing, they mean it. Or you think that that video that I did a couple years ago called Cheap Video Projectors and Why You Need to Avoid Them, you think that that picture looked bad. Well, this doesn't look any better. It's dark. Yeah, it's a, it's a picture. But, it, you know, it's, it's not particularly high resolution. It's a single gun, single CRT. But, saying that, this piece of equipment is such a unique piece of equipment that, I mean, this was not a cheap piece of equipment by any stretch of the imagination. This was an expensive piece of equipment. And I'm just going to go grab a beta tape and plug it in here and see how the beta tape looks on it. Now you know you guys are probably thinking how the hell did I figure out that was a bias problem? And how it dawned on me was I had my my video signal was coming in and I had my index signal and all my voltages were correct here but yet I had no video signal. When I unplugged the video plug while watching it, while it was turned on, I actually unplugged this plug and I was looking at the screen and when I plugged it in, I saw a picture momentarily and then go out and go all white. And I thought, what the hell? That almost looks like a bias problem. And I went and I touched the, the screen control here and I just moved it, oh, just a, a bit, just a, just a bit. 
and all of a sudden, bam, the picture just kicked right in immediately and I rolled it back and as soon as I rolled it back, it went all white again. So somewhere along the line, maybe some component drift or something in, the, in this high voltage resistor and it just it was just throwing the bias off and these indexatron sets are so sensitive because the tube needs to be biased so that there is some current flow even when the picture is black so that the index signal can be generated which we'll see is here's the index we need light from the inside of the tube for the index signal to be picked up so the tube has to be biased so that there is some emission so that that index signal will work so it's, it's very critical but if you're over biased or under biased it won't work it's they're really quite a finicky little setup once they're working they work great um, well for what they are it's a shadow maskless picture tube is what it is I've got my beta tape here this is the beta 1 tape I'm going to see if this thing plays beta 1. It should. It should play beta 1, no problem. So, uh, let's see here, eject. Let's put the tape in here. The tape holder is having a bit of a problem, but let's just see whether this will play my beta tape. Okay, well I just went and dug up a tape, my, one of my master tapes. If you look at uh, if you look at my uh, neon Las Vegas neon sign tape that's up on uh, that's up on YouTube, well, that's the edited version. This is one of the master tapes I did. This one was probably shot with the Beta movie, I believe. And there goes the heads getting clogged. But uh, I went there a couple times. One time I went down, I, I shot a tape on Beta one, which is, this is not the one. This is the Beta two. I just tried to play a Beta one tape on this unit and it won't play a beta 1 tape but it will play beta 2 and beta 3. Uh, I went down the first time I went down with a, a, a Sony M3 uh, camera, 3 tube camera that I had and that SLO uh, 340 portable and recorded it and that was a that was that was a lot of work carrying that buddy camera around believe me and a tripod and uh, and uh, recorder and then I went back in 80 I was that would have been 80 I think 84 is when I did that and then I went back again that was probably this is probably 86 or 87 I went back and this time I had a GCS 1 beta movie which was the professional beta movie that is what this footage was shot with and this footage is this one this one's actually part of Las Vegas neon 2 after it was all edited together but this is the this is the raw footage off the tape complete with all the dropouts and you know what it's not bad I mean it's uh, let's see if I can adjust that focus there's a little focus assist thing on here too you can adjust so you can adjust the focus I have a brightness control here I can adjust the brightness just the color of phase and the color. But it is what it is. And it works. And it's a really rare it's a really rare beast. There's the CRT. You can see the back side of the CRT is glowing green. If we zoom in here, right, the, the back side of the CRT, I don't want to stick my fingers in too close there because there's high voltage in this thing, but the back side glows green and that is what feeds that index signal. I'll turn this beast around so you can see the other side of it because obviously we can see the tube a little more clear on this side here. So you can see if you look down in the neck of the picture tube, we'll zoom in down there so you can see that there is actually only one filament. Because this is a single gun. Essentially, this is a black and white tube. That's what it is. It's a black and white tube that they've generated color on by sequencing the color. 
and this color is sequenced using there's the other index signal that's a preamp so that picks up the signal that it reads off the back side of the tube as you can see it's glowing green but if I zoom the camera back a bit you'll see there's the there's the color portion you can see the white and so forth from the tube that's the color side of the tube the back side of the tube just has this green index signal the indexitron that I trained on it, it, they said they used a blue signal on this EM7 tube but uh, this is I say a very rare piece of equipment I've certainly never seen one before I heard about it but again I've never actually seen one now I own one it's now going to form part of my Betamax museum of beta equipment I think I own probably one of all the the major uh, generations of beta I have the first generation SL7200 which you've seen I have the second generation SL8600 I have the third generation which was the um, SL2000 series which is the slim line and the SL, uh, no, maybe that was the, that was the fourth generation. Third generation would have been the the SL5000 series, which I have an SL5200. I have the fourth generation, which was the SL2000 uh, generation with the direct drive motors. I don't have a 2500 or a 2700. I wish, but I've got the, I've got two SL2000s. And um, then I have the fifth generation, which was the Super Beta machines, as in the SLHF 900 series, and the last generation, which would have been sixth generation, which would have been the SLHF 1000 editors. I don't have an SLHF 2000 or anything else. The last one I have is an SLHF uh, 1000 editor, and a couple cameras and a beta movie that doesn't work because the heads are shot on it and now I've got this fine piece of equipment to add to my collection I um, hope you enjoyed looking at this thing I can put it together now because it works and even though the problem wasn't that uh, wasn't that really complex it took a while to find it just because of the complex nature of how the, the indexitron signal works and it was kind of a process of elimination that uh, got me to the answer on this which is what a lot of electronic troubleshooting is you kind of start disconnecting things and looking at what happens when you do it um, perhaps I'll show you guys if I can what led me to discover what the problem was I'm just showing you down the actual lens itself right onto the picture tube and see if I can get my camera in a little closer and make maybe focus as a little better on the tube itself okay then we're able to see the CRT as you can see the color stripes on it I'm trying to focus this thing and so you can actually see the actual color stripes so there are the, there are the color stripes on the uh, surface of the CRT noise around here to wake the dead everybody shouting okay now you can you can actually see I'm gonna try and get a little closer up shot than that so there's the, what I had initially I had a full white tube you can actually see how the index signals are laid out you can see and, and it looks like they're the blue stripes actually but um, anyway the, the index signals are laid out they're a thin signal that is that is narrower than the color stripes so, so it's actually those little thin blue stripes which is what I thought it was even though it looks green on the back of the tube it's actually blue the index stripes are blue you can see them it's the thin blue stripes so you've got your color stripes and then you got a blue stripe then you got your series of color stripes and you got a blue stripe it's a narrower stripe than the rest so that the filter can figure out which pulse coming back because all the light from the tube the phosphorus lights up inside the tube as well so all the light lights up but also the uh, but the, the the index signal which is the thin stripe I can focus the camera there that has a shorter duration 
So there's a filter that filters out all of the other pulses and just allows the index pulse to get through. And that is what is used to reference the switching circuit that switches the rest of them. When the set was acting up, it was like this, because I've just under-biased the uh, tube again. And what I was doing when I was, when I was troubleshooting is I was unplugging the video signal, which would shut it off. And it may not show on camera here, but when I first plugged it in, it's messing with the iris on the camera, but when I would do this, I was plugging it in, I was seeing a bit of an image for a second when I was looking down the barrel of the tube. And I thought, what the hell? It kind of almost looks like the tube is misbiased. So I, I turned the screen control slightly. And all of a sudden it just popped on, just like that. It's off, I just give it a bit of a turn, and bam, the signal popped on. Just like that. It's off, bam, it's on. So it's like, holy smoke, it was just a bias problem. And that was, that's how I came about finding the problem on this thing was just it was just I was t tweaking it and I was I just the the uh, video signal that comes off of the index board and goes over to the CRT I was seeing a solid white signal on there but I wasn't seeing any video and I just couldn't figure out why because I had video going in and I had the index signal reading out from the index amplifiers that are on the tube but I didn't have any signal. So, well, what's going on? Why is it switching? Why is it doing what? Well, what it was doing is it was trying to create an index signal so that it could read the index pulses. And because the tube was misbiased, it wasn't getting or reading the right signal. Adjust the bias slightly, and bingo. The tube comes on. But I say, this is. This is the, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a really cool technology, the way Sony had come up with, here we can make a color picture tube that doesn't need a shadow mask, and it doesn't need an aperture grill, and therefore there won't be any uh, problems with purity, and there won't be any problems with convergence. This was what Sony was working on. And this is as far, I think, as they got it. They, they got it in a small little portable TV, a little 3.7 inch tube set. I've only ever seen one of those. And then this one that they use for their portable all-in-one projector. So it's quite the rare piece. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I should probably, there's looks like there's some dirt on the tube. You can see it down here. So maybe I'll pull this lens off before putting it together and actually give the tube a clean. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a neat piece and I'm, I'm really kind of happy to have this in my collection because I know how rare this unit is. Hope you enjoyed this video and we will uh, catch you in the next one. Bye. And of course, there's a real close up where you can see the index stripes.